Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you guys can see, I've got a new bookshelf. This is a mini bookshelf that I am planning to use to store all of my future cloth bound penguin classics. So, right now I've just got a mishmash of books here. Ah. Uh... On the first shelf here, we have The Hating Game. I was actually reading this like a couple of pages in, but then October started and the vibes just changed. I was in my romance era, but October came and I just wanted more spooky vibes. I have heard mixed reviews about this. People have said that this is really good, but then I've also had people tell me that they absolutely hated it. So I don't know, we shall see. But yes, I'm keeping it, of course. If it's below four stars, I will probably give it away. Then we we have Skin of the Sea, which I've tried reading two times now, but so I'm just not in the mood for it. But again, I don't want to give it away because this is about a mermaid. <sighs> a mermaid and she's like a person of color and I, I love that. I like the whole um, tribal native mermaid vibe, like warrior mermaid vibe. So this one I'm going to be unfolding my lesbian experience with loneliness. I don't understand it. I really don't. I love the colors, the inside. It's like pink, you know, it's like pink manga. It's so cute. It also delves into some deeper topics about sexual orientation, mental health and illnesses and all that. And again, I'm not, I, I can't relate to that. So yes, I will be unholding this one. Hopefully someone from the free library will pick this up and like it. So, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which obviously I'm not going to be giving away. This is stunning. It's Gryffindor edition as well, so mine forever. We have Awaken the Giant Within. This was my dad's and I'm currently reading it at the moment. It's a really good book, but I've stopped halfway. God knows why, but it's still really good and I do want to read it. So this one is so good. Saving Grace by Jane Green. Yeah, I want to reread it someday. How am I gonna throw this one away? Look at that. How am I ever gonna throw this away? This is stunning. And then we have a couple of my favorite lit books. Obviously, I'm not gonna be throwing this away. We have, I think that's the City of Dusk. The City of Dusk. We have Babel. That um, very pretty, obviously. Not throwing that. We have Book of Night by Holly Black. The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. These are all fairly lit editions. Oh, this one. I'm not sure if I'm ever gonna read this, honestly. It's not like high up on my list. I have come to realize that I only want to read books that I really 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 want to read you know what I mean so Saints and Misfits by SK Ollie and Holling we have An Error to the Moon this is a beautiful uh, Romeo and Juliet retelling this one has really nice prose let me just read the first sentence for you guys once upon a time there was a girl who lived on the moon as its guardian she was its heart and its breath I know. Obviously, <laughs> keeping that one. Next, we have my favorite contemporary romance. <laughs> this is The Love Hypothesis and it's turning into a movie, which I'm super excited. <sighs> By Ali Hazelwood. This one I'm actually going to be bringing to Japan with me. Never ever going to be throwing this one away. I will probably get a hot cover of this as well just to collect because this is my absolute favorite, 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 favorite <laughs> contemporary romance ever. This gives me so much serotonin. I'm just so happy. Anyways, yep. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which I'm not throwing away as well. Oh, when I say throw away, I mean unholing. But yes, we have this one, The Host by Stephanie Meyer. Ooh, Stephanie Meyer. Wow. I had no idea. But again, I'm not interested in this. It has like dystopian vibes. And I'm just... No, I don't think I will ever pick this up. <laughs> it might be a good book, but I just don't think I will ever pick this up. I have so many more books that I want to pick up. So yeah, if you guys are interested, this is the book that I'm currently reading. Belladonna by Adeline Grace. Anyways, we have Ransom Riggs by Map of Days. Obviously never, ever, ever, ever getting rid of my Ransom Riggs books. Excuse me, like this is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. <laughs> I also have it signed, so. Also, by the way, it's really messy, the shelves, because I have yet to organize them. I just literally just chuck all the books here. We have Heart of Flames, which is the second book in the Crown of Feathers trilogy. Obviously, not throwing it away. We have Daughter of the Moon Goddess. Obviously, never throwing her away. Daughter of the Moon Goddess. This is my favorite retelling of um, the Chinese folktale, Chang Er. Only a Monster by Vanessa Lin. Keeping that. To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. Kingdom of the Wicked. Stunning. J.K. Rowling's uh, Fantastic Beast Thingy. My Waterfire Saga series. My favorite mermaid series of all time. Three Harry Potter books here. These two I'm going to be unhauling. The Kingdom. I rated this one a three star, I think. And basically, this is about AI robots. Artificial intelligence robots in this beautiful, fantastic uh, theme park. And one of them actually starts to do things out of what they were being programmed to do. So they're starting to think a little bit more human-like. Yeah. 
I didn't really like the ending as much. It was okay. Next, we have Putney. <laughs> now, if you guys have been on my Instagram a long time ago, you guys will know. I bought this, obviously, because I love strawberries. And I bought this one thinking it was really cute because of this giant strawberry in the cover. But the story, if you guys have read Lolita, this is like the same. So it's about grooming, basically. This old man that was grooming a kid and like having sex with her and... It was so bad, literally. It's not the best, it's really, it's really not good. I didn't find the writing beautiful or spectacular in any way. Um, the story was boring, it just wasn't executed right, in my opinion. And then we have House of Leaves. I stopped like right in the middle of this, and then I just couldn't continue. It's such a hard book to get through, but I am determined to give it a try again until I finish the entire book. If you guys have never heard of House of Leaves, this book was deemed the scariest book in the world. This book is so hard to read. Sometimes you have pages just filled with words like this, and then other times it's like this. You have to take a mirror, put the mirror here in order to read it. It's, this whole thing is a puzzle. Sometimes you have to go all around it, and you have to go in between pages, back and forth, up and down. Just, it's a puzzle. And look, look at this. What? What is that? It's like this entire page, and then you have a, a dot. They also have a page purely with like musical sheets and scores. If you play an instrument, you can play it out just to figure out the story further. And it's just, it's a mystery, this book. I want to, obviously want to read it again. Yeah, and then we have more of my Miss Peregrine books and the same ones here. The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Um, I think I rated this one a four star, so keep it going. Now we're gonna move on to this one, this shelf over here, so we'll see. The Picture of Dorian Gray. Never ever getting rid of it. This is a great, great one of my favorite, favorite classics. It's so good. The Forbidden Sea by Sheila Nielsen. Uh, I think I will be unholding this one. Emergency Contact, which unfortunately I don't like it that much, but I kind of want to keep it for the aesthetic. So The Great Gatsby. I've read a little bit. Can you see like a little pink tab? I will never throw away classics. So I got this one years ago, but um, I never ever picked it up. This is a Christmas book, but every time I'm doing Christmas, they're just better Christmassy books to read. And usually in the Christmas time, I love reading Harry Potter, <laughs> The Christmas Carol, and like small town romance books. But this I just never picked up. So unfortunately, I will be unholding this. Then of course, we have Shine by Jessica Jung, which unfortunately, I didn't like this book. Um, I might give her second book a try because I think the second book sounds a little bit more interesting than this one. I don't like this one. It reads like a children's book and I don't like the writing style. I think it's a little bit too cringy. Oh, but the aesthetics though, it will look so good on my shelves because it's like pink. I don't know. I might keep it just for the aesthetics. I'm so sorry. I don't actually like the book and I will never ever read this again. In the future, once I have my pink bookshelves and once I have accumulated enough pink books, I will be on hauling. For now, I'm just gonna be keeping it for the aesthetics. This one I will be unhauling. This is Words in Deep Blue by Kath Crowley. But it's about two people, two broken people, working at a bookstore and they write letters to each other in the books. Doing that eventually leads to the both of them healing each other's trauma and wounds. And it just sounds amazing. It sounds so emotional, so beautiful. But the ending of this book was just, yeah, it didn't do anything for me. So unhauling. The girl who fell beneath the sea. Never, ever unhauling that. Just look at this. Why would you ever unhold that? crazy. Pride and Prejudice, this is the Penguin English Library one. Never ever throwing that away because Mr. Darcy, hello. We have Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon keeping it. I might want to reread this. So we have Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett. It's not my favorite but it's a, it's cute. It's a cute, well-written, light-hearted romance which is so nice to read in the summertime, especially in the summertime because um, I think this book is based around like camping and then she gets lost um, in the jungle with, with the boy and and basically they try to survive in the wilderness together and obviously things happen. This one I will be unhauling. This is How to Keep a Boy from Kissing You by Tara Eddington. Unhauling. Six Crimson Cranes. Never unhauling this. So good. Five out of five stars. Can't wait to get the second book. The Dragon Promise. The Boy in Striped Pajamas. So good. If you guys don't know, this is about the Holocaust. We have In Order to Live by Pak Yeon Mi. So good. I think I might unhaul this one because I just never picked it up. I'm just not obsessed with it. There's just so many books that I want. 
cute to read that I don't think I will ever want to read this one. I'm going to be unfolding this unfortunately. I think someone else will appreciate this more than me. We have Eat, Pray, Love which I want to read. I really really do because I have heard about this book so many times and it's being referenced in so many different movies. Um, especially The Big Bang Theory. Raj from The Big Bang Theory is always quoting things from um, Eat, Pray, Love and this was also uh, adapted into a film starring Julia Roberts. This one I will be unhauling. I read this book and it's nothing like nothing that I would want to come back to and reread. Next we have Why the Rich Are Getting Richer which is a horrible book. I think I rated this a one or a two star. Don't read this. It's it's ridiculous. It's it's horrible. Uh, we have some Jane Austen books. Persuasion and Sense and Sensibility. Obviously keeping these because you always learn so much from classics which I love. So we're done with this bookshelf but I do have some other books in the drawer and all that we're gonna clear out those books too um so we have these books here and then a couple more here so i'm gonna take all these books down and then we'll have a little sort through this is the kiss quotient by han huang uh I think I rated this a three star. I mean it is a cute love story but I just it wasn't for me because everything it was just about sex very physical with very little emotional um connection and for me i need that i need that emotional connection first i like the whole pride and prejudice kind of very innocent wholesome romance like touching hands holding hands cuddling hugging kissing and all that and not just like bam sex so this book was just literally from chapter one all the way it's just sex it's just sex and lust and it's just not my thing. I did enjoy it, but I wasn't obsessed. And I don't think I will ever want to read this one again, so. Kingdom of the Curse. Five out of five stars, of course. This is my favorite fantasy romance. Kingdom of the Curse is the second book in the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy. My favorite. I obviously am still waiting for the third book, Kingdom of the Fiat. I can't wait to read it. Oh my goodness. Heroes of Olympus, The Lost Hero. This was my brother's. This is part of the Percy Jackson um, series. But if I'm not wrong, this one actually follows the son of Zeus. Zeus instead of the son of Poseidon because Percy is the son of Poseidon. This one actually follows the son of Zeus. I know! If you guys didn't know, I love Greek mythology so I can't wait to get started on the Song of Achilles and there's so many more. We have another stack of books. This one I will be unhauling. I bought this when I was really young. I think my mom bought it and I really don't like it when I see covers like this. Like when there's like a naked man or like a naked woman or you know something like this. It just screams erotica to me. I do like to read books like this sometimes on my Kindle or an ebook but I don't think I want to own a physical copy of just like a man. He's on both sides as well. Unhauling this. A totally awkward love story. I will be unhauling this because it just wasn't great. Next we have To All the Boys I Loved Before. I don't think I will ever pick this up unfortunately so I'm not a huge fan of the TV series either so I don't know why I'm holding on to it. Maybe it's the cover. Maybe I do like the cover. I think the cover is pretty. Also not a fan of Peter. Is that his name? There's just so many better book fictional men than Peter so I know books with Chloe really like it but she likes a lot of other books that I don't like as well. So we have different reading tastes I think. Yeah I'm gonna unhold this. I'm sorry. These ones I am going Going to be keeping all of them. I'm just gonna quickly show you what they are. The Spanish Love Deception, 5 out of 5 stars. The Vicious Grace, Her Gift Can Save or It Can Kill. Very pretty book. We have this one as well, which I'm very excited to read. This is Twin Crowns. First of all, look at the cover. Oh, but basically this is about two twin princesses who were separated at birth, battling for the crown. Basically two sisters fighting for one crown and purple and gold is just screaming royalty to me. So I might bring this to Japan with me. Dark Academia, Witchcraft, Spooky Vibes. So I might read this this month. The Stardust Thief. I've tried reading twice but I wasn't in the mood for it so I had to put it down. For last but not least we have everybody knows him. This is Mr. Steve Jobs. His story is very inspirational and there's lots of things that you can learn. I'm a sucker for Apple so <laughs> keeping it. That is all. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So these will be coming with me to the free library. Hopefully I can find 12 other books in exchange for these books. But if we can't, then we'll just get whatever. I am just planning to donate these anyways.
guys, look at that. It's literally filled up <laughs> to the top. Hey guys, so I just came back, freshened up a little bit, I have my cat ears. So I donated 15 books and I came out with 21 books. I have all of my books here. Anyways, before we get started with the book haul I got from the free library, I did order one book specifically off of Amazon. This is Mexican Gothic and I'm super excited. I'm actually doing my first buddy read with a friend that I made off of Bookstagram. My first Bookstagram friend, book friend. Um, her name is Books and Snow on Instagram. I can't wait for her to receive her copy so we can get started with Mexican Gothic. This is a Gothic romance book and I am very excited to read this. The vibes are perfect for October. You have Victorian gothic literature, a little bit of romance, dark academia, gloomy whole secret society kind of vibe. So very excited. This is Mexican gothic. Okay, so let me just zoom you guys here. So over here we have children's books and children's classics. Then we have regular classics, adult fiction books, and we have non-fiction books right here. So I did manage to get quite a little bit of books. They're all from different genres as well. First one I got, these are the Mr. Men series. So I have Mr. Funny, Mr. Men at the Park, Mr. Men on holiday and Mr. Man making music and I used to collect all of these books when I was younger but then my mom <laughs> threw them away so I want to start collecting them again. I love reading Mr. Man books. Yes. Oh I love them so much. Obviously I got this because of cats. This is a collection of short of bedtime stories basically. It's just really beautifully illustrated as well. Every page is beautiful. And then I got this one. When I saw it, I just had to get it. This is a Cinderella book. A magazine, almost. I collect Cinderella things, sorry. So I obviously had to get this when I saw it. And this is the Disney Cinderella book. Oh my goodness, look at that. So beautiful. I just love collecting anything that's Cinderella, vintage Cinderella things. And now moving on to children's classics five children's classic. The first one I have is The Little Prince and I have never read this book before but I know this is a cult favorite. I think Emma from Emmy Reads on YouTube. So I think this is one of her favorite classics so and it's also Carolyn's Carolyn Marie Reads on um, booktube. This is also one of her favorite classics and she's also got a tattoo related to this. It's really cute. It has that old book smell which I absolutely love. The next one I got, The Boy Who Invented Books for the Blind. I've never heard about this actually but I just thought it was really interesting. It's about this guy called Louis who's 12 years old and he's born blind and he is just determined to create a system for blind people to be able to write and read. You have beautiful illustrations on the inside as well and at the back it's really cool because you have these alphabets so you can actually feel the little like you know how blind people read right like that and I love that. I I love that we can read and learn more about these kind of things. I had to pick up Charlotte's Web when I saw it. I love the movie and the films, so obviously I had to get it. I love this one. Also has that amazing old book smell. This is from Puppin Classics. The Railway Children by Jacqueline Wilson. And I just think it's gonna be a really fun read. So this book follows three siblings, Roberta, Peter and Phyllis as they live their life happily in London and they don't realize how happy their life in London is until their father goes away unexpectedly and they had to move to the countryside to stay with their mother and then they have many exciting adventures but even though they have many exciting adventures the mystery remains where is father and will he ever return I just thought it was gonna be really fun you know having three siblings moving from the city to the countryside going on adventures and discovering the mystery behind why their father went away it gives me Narnia bridge to Terabithia kind of like lost in adventure kind of vibe I want to read this very nice and the last children's classic I picked up it's Smith by Leon Garfield I love the illustration it reminds me of Roald Dahl's like James and the Giant Peach I know and this one it's actually about a 12 year old boy his name is Urchin Smith he has a talent for picking pockets of the wealthy people in London but one day after successfully actually picking the pocket of a wealthy rich man 
he witnesses his death and so he got tangled in a web of crime and mystery and betrayal and all these kind of things it sounds fun <sighs> i love discovering new books now of course since we're on the topic of classics i do have two adult classics that i picked up these are also from puffin classics the hunchback of notre dame by victor hugo and i love quasimodo i love the films i love the disney films again i've never read the books but i love the story of quasimodo ever since i was a kid i have loved the story of quasimodo I'm so happy that I actually found a copy. This is actually on my live TBR. Obviously, I had to pick up when I saw this. Little Women. I've never read Little Women, but I have watched the Netflix adaptations. I love it. Obviously, I had to pick up the book to read it. I basically donated most of my YA books in exchange for classics. I love this. Now we have the adult fiction genre pile. So I'll move the non-fiction aside first and we'll do the adult. Books. We have three books. Fatal Seductions 2 by Douglas Lee. I read the blurb and I was just, I was so intrigued. I'm gonna read it for you guys. It says, she is beautiful and she knows it. Men love her and she likes it. She makes men seduce her and she enjoys it. But what she doesn't know, she has AIDS. <laughs> yeah, obviously I, I just had to get it. I just want to know. It sounds like, I mean, it definitely sounds like it's written by a man. Um, questionable, but we'll see. You know, I'll give it a try. It sounds interesting though. Next book I picked up, so pretty. It reminds me so much of Summer, a book that I would probably want to read in the summertime. This is about a marriage gone wrong. There's a little bit of cheating or backstabbing that happens, problems with adult marriage life. When I read the blurb for this, you know, it sounded kind of similar to Saving Grace by Jane Green, and I really like that book. That was a five star read for me. I thought I would probably really like this one too. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I just love reading about things going wrong in life and then being able to find yourself again, getting stronger and finding yourself again. Mm, love. Yeah. And it says at the back, how well do you actually know the one that you love? And I really like that. I like things that kind of like mess with your head. Like that's actually a really deep question. Like how well do you really know someone that you love? Because you will never know. I always say that. You will never know what's inside someone's heart or someone's mind. Yes. The last adult book that I picked up was Pachinko. This book is actually on my live TBR. I do want to read it someday. So I'm so happy that I actually managed to find one. Although the cover is messed up, someone like scraped this on the front page with like pencil. I mean, if it is pencil, I can try to get it off with an eraser. Yeah, it's just like, it's an adult literary fiction. And I am very excited to read this. Yeah, and this book is set in Yongdo, Korea in 1911 and it follows the life of a 15 year old girl who got married to an old man basically and they had one daughter named Sunja. When Sunja falls pregnant and married a Yakuza, the family face ruined of course but then a Christian minister offers a chance of salvation, a new life in Japan as his wife. I'm guessing she moved to Japan, becomes a Christian and so basically lots of like spiritual religious warfare which is very interesting. I do love reading about that. Very interesting. She's basically following a man that she barely knows into a hostile country because back then Korea and Japan they're like tension yeah until today actually among you know the older generation of people in Korea and Japan they still do have that tension this kind of reminds me of the last princess the last princess of Korea oh thinking about that makes me so sad but yes Pachinko by Lee Min Jin now we have some non-fiction books the first one it's a tiny one this is 1001 ways to enlightenment this book basically has quotes and life advices from every source so from Christianity you have like philosophers um, you have Gandhi Buddha whatever everything the all the wise words of all these wise men they're all here even the Bible I think Buddha has one really nice saying where um, whenever someone insults you and when you don't return that insult back it stays with them. Thank you, Buddha. Even though I'm not Buddhist, but thank you. I love this quote right here. Want less and you will find you have more. I love that. Being content with what you have, being grateful. So I picked this book up the moment I saw it. Etiquette and Modern Manners. This book is basically a whole list, checklist of good manners. It teaches you all of the etiquette that you need for weddings, divorce, deaths, funerals, memorial services, table manners. Mm -hmm. um, parties, invitations, letters, talks, visitors and house guests and how to host them, public occasions and events, and then business matters. So it just covers every topic and situation. Courtship. If you're trying to court people, getting married, ending a relationship, 
with etiquette, with manners. Etiquette on sports and games. Etiquette on dressing. Full evening dress, morning dresses, formal wear. I just absolutely love this. This is a practical guide on how to become more refined and how to have etiquette. Next, I got a really small book. This is just a book of deep sea creatures. I love animals, marine animals, just animals in general, every animal except for creepy corallies. You have the anglerfish and all these like deep sea creatures that we don't normally see. Look how ugly he is. But he's also really cute. I love marine animals. My favorites are sharks and orcas and dolphins and whales. I love the mystery of the giant squid, the kraken. <sighs> wow. I have a book all about that actually. It's so cute. Look at the suckers. Oh, the, law. the giant squid. Oh my goodness. Oh, how can I forget? My favorite, the Megalodon. I know. This one is bringing home the Birkin. So obviously the Birkin is really sought after in the fashion world, basically. The process of getting a Birkin is very fun. <laughs> this is about Michael's experience on getting a Birkin. I love watching people's Hermes story. And I also thought it would make a really cute coffee table book. But of course, I think it's going to be really fun to read it as well. Yeah, me personally, I love Hermes. I love what they stand for. I love the quality of their products. So I like to collect Hermes things. I think it will look really nice to display on the shelves. And then the last book I pick up, Life Without Limits. Now this book, I've seen it all the time. I've never picked it up and I've always wanted to. I have watched so many of Nick's talk shows and they always inspire me so much. We have the same belief. He is also a Christian and it's just so inspiring. He was born without arms and legs and he, he can do everything everything so who am i to say that i can't do anything when this man can do literally everything he also has a wife and kids and yeah he is so inspirational and it is really floppy we love that it passes the flop test those are all 21 of my books thank you guys so much for watching that is all for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in my next video